Yes, so, um, can you introduce yourself to the world? Praise the Lord. The introduction should be to capture your reality. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. By the grace of God, my name is Reverend Ebere Shukwebisike. I was formerly a, an ordained Catholic priest. So many years ago, God began to visit me and interrupt my journey. And that interruption necessitated a... Uh, your, your delivery is too, too academic. <laughs> what you mean by interrupt your journey? Can you tell us what you mean? How did it happen? What was the experience? What did you receive that made you believe it was God interrupting? Okay. Well, I was in a season of my life when suddenly I began to feel a lot of vacuum and emptiness. I was very fat and flourishing, and I thought that I should lose some weight, just engage in a campaign of weight losing. I actually did that, but the emptiness remained. But suddenly, somebody one day came to me and said, I want to go on a dry fasting, three days dry fasting. And I asked, is that possible? The person said, yes. I said, so what have I to do with your three days dry fasting? He said, can you help me get CDs? Now, I'm a Catholic, I was a Catholic priest, and the only place I had to do dealings was Catholic bookshops. And this person was asking me to go to a non-Catholic bookshop to get those uh, CDs. I didn't know what made me to agree. Because normally, I would have given the person the finances needed to execute those requests. But I said, okay, I will go. But when I went to those um, bookshops, I saw the CDs that the person requested. But something drew my attention to the books on the shelf. Now, we are used to seeing books that had very cool titles like Novena to Mary, uh, The Way to St. Joseph, all those calm titles. But here in this bookshop, I saw very rugged titles like How to <laughs> Revival by Fire, <laughs> How to Catch Fire, Hunger This. But one actually caught my attention. That was uh, by, it was written, If You Could See the, invis see the Invisible, Do the Impossible by Aura Robert. I picked the book and I looked at it. Now, I liked the title and I was wondering, what is this book all about? The moment I tried returning the book back to the shelf, my fingers began to burn. Very strangely, like you could light a matchbox. So I was confused. I said, what was happening to me? I looked at my fingers. It was not burnt. But the sensations were real to me. And I had a witness. Take this book and read. That was the beginning of the journey. I paid for the books. I went home. And I consumed that book from 9 p.m. until morning. And thereafter, I said, I said, God, if you're the one responsible for this experience, give me another book. So I said I was not going to the same bookshop. I knew there were other non pentecostal bookshops in, in Joss. That was in Joss. So I went to another bookshop called Challenge Bookshop. They had more book titles. I saw another book. Now, that season, Joss was, Joss was very cold, and everybody was in their cardigan. And I walked into that bookshop, went to a particular shelf, saw this book, and I began to look at it. Immediately, the atmosphere around me changed. I began to feel very warm, very sweet atmosphere. I was wondering, everybody was in, feeling very cold, but mine was different. I picked that book, and I looked at it. And the title was Rediscovering God's Kingdom Ideas by Miles Monroe. Again, I had a witness, take and read. I picked the book, I went home, I began to read, and that book made me ask myself a question, who am I, and what am I doing right now? Because after reading Aura Robert, I began to realize that there was things that pertain to the life of a man of God, a minister, and I checked myself, I didn't have those evidence. And I began to ask God what was happening. That was the beginning of a journey. It began to lead me from one book to the other. Now, after reading, um, my small book. I said, I'm not so sure that it is you that is speaking to me. I'm going to another bookshop, and I want to confirm that you're the one leading me. Now, I went to another bookshop. I saw another book by A.W. Tozer. I can't remember the title. It was the only title on that shelf. I went to the bookkeeper. I said, I want to buy this book. He said, people are rushing it. Pick it now. I said, okay, this is very good. I said, I'm not going to pick it. I'll come for it tomorrow. The, the lady said, if you come tomorrow, I guarantee you will not, you'll not see this book. So I said, Holy Spirit, if you're the one leading me, let this book wait for me tomorrow. So I went home. Now, this time around, I felt I was tempting God. And I couldn't wait tomorrow to arrive. Very early in the morning, I was on my way to the bookshop. And lo and behold, I saw the book right there. I picked it up, went home, read it. Then, another encounter. So, I had another lady, do you want to read another book? I said, yes. That was how I read more than a dozen books, just at the instruction of the Holy Spirit. And later on, I didn't know the books I was reading because I didn't know those authors. I never knew their biographies. But later on, I began to discover that there were books of people that had revivals, strange encounters, massive work with God. And that period, I began to ask God what was happening to me. But suddenly, there was a strange atmosphere. I began to feel very warm around me. Anywhere I went, I could ask people, is the weather okay? Are you feeling hot? 
because I was feeling very warm. When I go to celebrate Mass, my hands would be on fire, and I thought it was a candle on the table, on the altar, so I would move the candles a little bit away from me, and I would still feel those strange fire. Those were the times when the Holy Spirit began to encounter me, and I wouldn't leave my room for a long time, and began to open, open me up to some realities, and he told me that I should try fasting. I remember that person that I bought those CDs for, said three days dry fasting. I couldn't come to fasting. I said, how can I? Because as a Catholic priest, you have no need of anything. Food is morning, afternoon, evening. You can eat as much as you want. So I was thinking about all the chickens and all the beautiful food <laughs> that I was going to miss for three days. So, and meanwhile, when I went to do weight, um, when I engaged in my weight loss, I was fasting. Because I told the cooks not to give me food. I was taking lime and honey. But now that I was in the spirit, I wanted to fast. It was so difficult. But eventually I told them that nobody should come near me. Nobody should ask me anything about food. I want to go on a three days dry fasting. Now, it was very tough because every day I felt like dying. I felt like dying. I waited. I, in fact, I, wasn't, I was no longer praying. I was no longer studying the Bible. I was calculating all the food I was going to read, <laughs> all the food I was going to eat after the fasting. It was around 4 p.m. when I broke the fast. I went to... <laughs> I went to I went to the town. I bought a lot of food. But by the time I dropped them in front of me, I could, just take a, I could only take a morsel. It was then that I asked myself, could it be that I had failed God in not fasting, not praying? But then it began to, those atmospheres began to increase. And I knew I needed answers. The priests around me could not find the answer. I remember the person that did three days fasting. I said, do you know of any man of God that can talk to me? And then the person said, yes, my, I have a pastor friend. That was how I was introduced to a pastor, a very genuine man of God, very humble, on fire. First of all, he resisted me because his question was, how can you, a Catholic priest, be looking for me, a pastor? Because we don't normally cross paths. I said, so far to be so. I'm hungry. There's something I'm looking for. So he resisted me for a long while, but I kept coming close to him. So when he saw that my hunger was genuine, he sat down with me, and I began to tell him my experiences. I was always on fire. I was having strange encounters. Um, one of those encounters was... I never knew Benihim, never knew him, but I had an encounters with him, very drastic encounters that the next day I switched on TBN television and everything that he was sharing on television were graphic experience that I had the previous night. So I shared with this man of God and he said, God is interested in you and he wants to do something that is unimaginable. So I thought it was just normal. Okay, I was going to start seeing power, just like I read in those books, but it changed. That was the day that I had an encounter where I had a vision of, God showed me the vision of the church. And in that vision, I didn't see any difference. All of us, just like Pentecostals, Orthodox, Charismatics, everyone, and we're all in formation. There was no difference. And he was telling me, this is the picture of the church. And that what we have now is not his church. And that if I'm willing, he was going to take me on a journey and reveal his body to me. That was when I knew that the, journey, the, the man was going to be very tough. He said, this journey requires that I withdraw from the Catholic, church, from the Catholic priesthood and follow him. But he said that when it is time, I should not take any pause, any have a sack for the journey. I went to ask my pastor friend, now he became my mentor. What is God saying? He said, he's telling you that when it is time, he wants to take you, you, you need to leave the Catholic priesthood, and when it is time, don't take anything. I said, is this possible? I have been trained about 10 years in the Catholic church. I have served as a priest for seven years. I said, put all this together, how many years? <laughs> he was laughing at me. He said, God wants to lead you like Abraham. I said, I don't like this kind of leading. He should give me a roadmap. I want to map where to go, where to stop. But he said, no, you need to leave. I went home. I wept. I cried. I asked God if he can stop this journey. I'm okay. Just this experience I was having. But then he sent someone that I have never known. That God said that he should tell me. But if I was complaining that my years of training as a, Catholic, as a Catholic priest and my years of pastoral ministry were waste, that I should understand that he's not a waster of any destiny. That my past are his investment for the future. That if I can trust him with my life, then everything that was my training, my background, he was going to use it in the future. But I should take the step and move. So when I heard that, I was convinced that God was working with me. Now, when it was time to leave, I found it very difficult. Because again, I had family, I had parents, I had siblings, and I didn't know how to disclose to them. And the Holy Spirit said to me, if I give you an instruction, you must share with no one. If you share with this people, they will discourage you from taking this journey. So when I was in the dealings for two years, he said I shouldn't share with anybody. Only about five persons knew that I was going to leave the Catholic priesthood. So when I left, it was a big news. People thought I was crazy. My parents didn't know. I took them by surprise. And I couldn't see them for two years because I didn't know what to tell them. When I left the priesthood, 
He said, no, carry no pause, no have a start for the journey. I didn't know where to go. Then I went back to him. I said, what do you want me to do? The pastor that had been mentoring me told me that I should go and pray and ask God who will teach me. I said, I don't understand. I said, just go and ask God who will teach you. So when I left the Catholic priesthood, I didn't have a place to lay my head. I didn't have any money in my pocket. And I was under strange attacks. Everybody was looking for me. Knights, the eagle of Jaws. Everybody knew me when they heard that I made a decision. I didn't know where to go. So somebody said, if you don't know where to go, just come to my house. So I went to the person's house, and all I was doing was three days dry fasting, seven days fasting, 21 days, 40 days. I was asking God what was next. One day, he gave me a scripture in Isaiah 30, verse 20, 21. That though the Lord gives you the bread of adversity and the waters of affliction, your teachers will not be far from you. I said, my teacher will not be far from me. So you hear a voice, I'll say, this is the way. I began to ask the Lord, who is my teacher? Meanwhile, while I was a Catholic priest, I had two years visa to the U.S. And I was planning to escape from Nigeria and leave all the attacks and all the, because the rumor spread that uh, a woman was pregnant for me. I stole money from the church. I had planned, I had built houses. I was running away. And I said, Lord, if this is your plan, why do you want to make a mess of me? But I prayed that period, and I planned to leave Nigeria for U.S. While I was praying, my brother was a medical doctor in the Caribbean. He called me and said, if you don't know what to do with your life, just come to the Caribbean and rest. So we began to work on a visa. And they asked for 500000 He said, I don't have 500000 to give you. I said, don't worry. I went to the embassy, and I asked them to give me a form. I filled the form, gave it to them. After a few weeks, they, they called me to come and pick the visa. So I began to thank God that he has given me American visa and Caribbean visa. When I began to ask God if I should travel, he never said anything. Everybody was saying, since you have left the priesthood, you don't know what to do with your life, travel to U.S., maybe there you can find a way forward. I waited. Now, the, the story is that eventually I didn't travel. I didn't use any of those visas. They all expired. And I went back to God. I said, why will you give me a visa to U.S., a visa to the Caribbean, and I will not travel? He said, there is nothing you ask me that I cannot give you. But many times, what I give you are not meant for you, but to know whether your heart is with me or your heart is where you're going. But since you have decided that you will not go to U.S., and you don't go to the Caribbean. He said, the earth is the loss and its fullness. There is no place that I decide that you cannot go. Only walk with me. So when I started to walk with him, it was in Abuja. I had only two pants, two shirts, and his shoes. And I was in Abuja. It was the most terrible experience I've ever had. I looked at myself from, like coming from grace, what I consider was grace, to grass. And I was in a season when five, 15 naira was like 5,000 naira. 1,000 naira is like, it's like 10,000 naira. Those seasons, I could make call, I could work for MTN, because I could calculate every second how I was making the call. I could manage things. My friend that took me in didn't have anything. His brother was um, a Catholic, and when he heard that I was an ex-Catholic, he hated me. <laughs> so <laughs> he was squatting with his brother, and when he asked me to come and stay, me, I considered myself to be floating, because I had no space in the house. When I come in, he would frown around, look at me with all manner of disgust, but my, brother would, he, my friend would tell me, just calm down, calm down, calm down. I had no source of income. He would call me, Padre, I have 200 naira. Take 100. I keep 100. That was how I kept surviving. When it is time to go to church, maybe the transport will be 100 naira. I will have only 50, 50 